what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about intuition and ways that you may not even know that you're intuitive, like they're called the clairs. John and I are going to go through that. We're going to tell you some stories. So through us and our stories, we can help teach you because you can identify with us then. You could say, oh, that happened to me too. We're also going to talk about how mediumship works for us and how you can tune in to your loved ones in spirit. If we can, we're going to get a lucky person up here uh, for, you can't hear John because I'm the one talking. <laughs> so, so, and then we're going to... Uh, hopefully get they're saying that they're having a hard time hearing you speak John so actually why don't you talk and I'm gonna be quiet for a second all right um, if they hear me okay then give it a thumbs up everybody or say hello if you can hear me okay and what she's basically saying is because Colette didn't we usually do a uh, workshop together in Arizona I said let's just hop on and do this uh, for as many people as we can you know and we wanted to talk about intuition how people, uh, many of you have, know how to tap into your intuition. Some of you may not even know that you're even getting uh, intuitive hits. It's that still voice. Exactly. Well, that is that still voice that says, you know, making a decision, like, yes, do that or don't do that. But do we always listen to it? Not always. Yeah, and there's different ways people receive intuition. It could be that gentle nudge. It could be that feeling. You might hear that still small voice. You may see clairvoyantly. You may feel, you know, and Good intuition too. As soon as you meet somebody for the first time, something says inside of you, or you may feel, I like this person. Or you may feel, mm, something is not right. You may hear it, feel mm -hmm. it, see something, right, Colette? Yeah, and we don't always trust that either. So, um, you know what, let's do now. We're two, three minutes in. I'd love to start with a meditation that's going to get everybody in tune and connected. So, when sure. we talk about these two subjects, intuition, which is the first step, and mediumship, which is the next step. Sorry, it's gotten very bright out there, and I'm tart looking a little darker. Let me move my move my chair a little. Um, we all come from a place that opens up to an alignment that we have with spirit. Now we're gonna use that word spirit or universe, but ultimately because we're talking about mediumship and we're talking about intuition, we're really talking about connecting to that spiritual aspect or the soulful aspect of the human experience and how we actually engage it. So I believe the abracadabra to everything is gratitude. So let's all tune in right now just to this feeling. So if we put our heart, hands over our heart, that's over the left. I always go, which one is it? <laughs> yeah, this one right here. And we want to take a deep breath. Oh, breathe in and allow yourself to fill with calm and being thankful, just being thankful, filling up with gratitude, the sense of gratitude. And it doesn't have to be for anything specific. When you breathe in, you're filling yourself with gratitude. And as you exhale, you're releasing the anxiety or the edginess that you may have with the way you are seeing your world at the moment, um, the way you're feeling your environment. We're just gonna let that go just for the time that you're here with John and I. So right now in this hour, John and I and you, we're gonna give ourselves a respite from anxiety and stress, okay? And a really great, uh, great way to push this into the earth is to just imagine as you breathe in and you breathe into gratitude and you're really feeling that, that you're pushing the anxiety and the stress and whatever is going on around you, the stories that matter in your head, you're going to want to push those deep into the ground. Actually, you can do it through the soles of your feet. Now, I kind of like stamping my feet a little bit just to kind of remind myself that the soles of my feet are on the ground. And just say, thank you, thank you. Because spirit does not actually, when you want something too much, when you want to connect with a loved one, when you want your intuition to work, you actually get less of it. So we just want to say thank you in advance for this connection, this deep, thankful, spiritual, meaningful, soul-based connection that we always have, but sometimes we just need to remember. 
Thank you. And I'll put it into the future. Thank you, too. Yes. Right. Thank you for the future. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I know that you guys have fires in California. I just want to make a note because I know quite a few of you are here from California and I wanted to give you a shout out. We just have snow here. We'd love to send you some snow. Um, but I know the fires are very scary. So for those of you who are feeling those feelings, just know for this moment, we are, we're safe here and we're talking here, um, connecting to spirit. Okay. So John, um, why don't we both tell our stories about uh, just a little bit so people can connect with how intuition works for us. How do, how do you feel it? And how, you know, how I feel that that may be different than yours. And then we'll go into the Claire's and we'll each talk about each Claire the way we see it. All right. Yes. When it comes to me with uh, intuition, some people call it psychic ability. It's all of the soul. And I think you first should start off too, like I am intuitive. You are naturally intuitive, everyone. If you have a soul, if you're watching us, you do. It's uh, you have a soul. It is your birthright. And I believe Colette too, and everyone who's listening, your intuition, your psychic ability, uh, it, it's what keeps us to connected to the divine, to the source. So it's natural. But what gets me too is it's free. It is absolutely <laughs> free. And it is there for you. But some people don't even know if they uh, are getting an intuitive hit, what it is. But for myself, I feel a lot too, which is clear sentient. It's in that belly. It's that it's that uh, abdomen feeling, that stomach. Uh, when you feel like something is uh, not right or right, I get it. And I also hear a lot too. Like um, the other day, I was driving. I live in New Hampshire, where Colette used to live. And I'm on the 95 going from Massachusetts up to New Hampshire. And in my head, I heard, take the back roads. So, but, but first of all, I asked, I wonder how the roads are going to be. That's what my, that was the question. And I put it out there. The response was, take the back roads. Yeah. But even though I do this work, everyone, did I listen to it? Did I listen to it? Logic says, this is, this is the synthesis at the end where you try to balance it. My logic said, I've gone this way before. There's never a backup. I'm going this way. And I didn't listen to it. I didn't take the back road. Um, I usually do listen to it. And what happens? Two and a half hours in traffic stuck before the tolls when I could have been home in 20 minutes. You see, right. guys, so your intuition is always asking, what do you want? How can I help you? Too many of us just wait for that intuitive hit to happen every once in a while. But also, it's um, I, I think too, Colette, a lot of people don't even know how to ask their intuition questions. Some people are like, will I meet someone? I mean, a good thing to do, guys, who are listening, you get quiet. You gotta, you gotta meditate, like Colette and I were talking earlier. You gotta get that chatter out of your head. So you can hear your intuition. It's very soft. You may feel a nudge. You may hear something. You may see a symbol. But you should start off, too, uh, asking your intuitions, too. And I learned this from my good colleague, Lynn Robinson. What's my next step? What's my next step? How could I? And then fill in the blanks. What is the best way to? And then let your intuition talk to you. That's how I say call it started off. And notice. Um, everyone, you know you've had an intuitive hit. It's that feeling that when you you knew you should have did something and you say this, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, but we didn't. It takes practice, but it is there, guys, and it's uh, it's there to help you. Yeah. So I'm trying to get the my camera right because my the it started getting really bright outside, and I noticed I had an orb on my cheek. <laughs> okay, so for me. Great. I have something, and we'll kind of describe, John sort of descript, described his clairsentience, which is feeling something. Um, so I have something called claircognizance, and it works. And actually, to believe it or not, more people have this. This is very natural. And so it's you start, and actually, John, your first book was called Born Knowing. So, right, it, right? and so it is the knowing quality that you have that you know something but you don't have any logical pre-information that would enable you to actually logistically have this information, but you just know it. So it's just, just when you say, I just know. And so those just knowings are similar to what John described when, you know, the sense of, um, oh, well, what's my next action? So I, I'd like to invite you right now to, um, and write, I hope you guys have some pens um, uh, to write down some notes, but our bodies 
are our intuition. Our bodies are the first source of intuitive information, first source. And so, oh, doggies are barking. Um, we have a dog house. And so consequently, you will feel something either just kind of plunk um, and that will tell you that you know something. So I'm gonna invite you into a quick exercise. Um, and you're going to ask yourself a question. Well, actually, no, you're going to tell yourself an absolute lie. So just when you're about to lie to yourself or someone else, it's a very specific feeling that is opposite to intuition. Um, so first thing is you're just going to sit there and write down an, a, a complete lie. And you can imagine yourself telling somebody this lie. Um, in, my, in our live events, when John and I do this together, we get everybody to lie to each other in the room. It's pretty hilarious. But if you could just write that down and really recognize, oh, this feels like it's mental. You'll you'll have to think about it. And it's almost like you get high. It, it's like it goes up in here and you're feeling like off. You will feel a little off and you will feel a little ungrounded when you lie, but it will also give you a sense of power because it's based in manipulation. Now we lie to ourselves all the time about what we want. So intuition, right? right? So intuition feels like telling the truth. So just imagine, and you're writing down the absolute 1000% truth. Just like write down, like John, how about John, you and I, you can model it. So tell me an absolute BS lie. Uh, I just wrote down, I've been to Iceland. Ooh, I have. <laughs> I don't know why My I okay, I weigh 220 pounds. <laughs> See, I couldn't even say it. I was like, I weigh 120 pounds. <laughs> so you kind of know, like, you say it, you say that letter, and you're like, oh, yeah. Like, you imagine that thing. So when you just say the truth about something, like, what's your middle name? Mine. Yeah. Well, who else? Albert. Albert, right? You Albert. know, my, my middle name is Albert. That's a total truth, right? My middle name is Vera. Vera. Vera means right. to tell the truth, right? So interestingly enough, so when you say what you know to be a thousand percent true, your feeling in your body is very different, right? Absolutely. Like it just is. Would we pick these names? No, right? So, <laughs> but this just is. So intuition lands in your body like truth, because it just is. You can't, you can't negotiate intuition. Right. You can deny it. Like how often do I say, I knew it. Like for example, when you meet somebody that you know is a red flag when you first meet them, and then you do everything you can to try to make it work. Yeah, we've all had that. With yeah. And sometimes those relationships, intuitively, you feel a connection to someone who's actually built to hurt you. So you're, you can't say that your intuition was off, because sometimes, because people ask me this question all the time, what if your intuition told you to connect to somebody? And then I always say, let's break it down. How, what was it like when you first set eyes on them? Well, it was like something more than a regular, hi, how are you? And then you realize, what lesson did I have? So it doesn't mean your intuition is wrong if you get into a jam, All right? That's the other thing, right? So people think it should only be, I'm only gonna be happy, joyous, and free. And my intuition is only gonna take me to places that are gonna be enjoyable. Sometimes we actually have to meet some people in our lives to teach us about what we haven't yet healed. And so, Intuition can also take you on a detour. And that's really important to know because people tend to be a little bit too black and white, right? Why don't we go through the Claire? So, so Claire cognizance is, is the, in the body, in the knowing. It's an intelligent knowing. It's like, I just know this. I don't know how I know this. I just know this. That's Claire cognizance. Let's do another Claire or tell me how you feel Claire cognizance is for you so that it helps them learn. It, it, you just like it, there's no better way to describe it. You can't. You just know it. I mean, some people will, uh, you know, feel, hear, or see, and you can't explain it, but you just know it and you trust it. And just like Colette said, everyone, with the when for me, you're gonna pick it up in different ways. When I said I've been to Iceland, your body is one big psychic antenna. It is. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? It's one big, it's water, it's electrons. It's where, you know, you're one big psychic contender. And like she said with the body, when I said I've been to Iceland, when I know my intuition says a no, I get nothing, Colette. It's like yeah. a dead fish, nothing. But when I say my middle is Albert, there's a well enough of uh, of a no. Yeah, there's a there's yeah. a joy, and you know your your soul being. But also too, uh, what Colette said, everyone is if you ask your intuition a question and you get a negative, it doesn't necessarily mean a no. Ask your intuition why is it a negative? You you if you if you own a company and you have an applicant in front of you on the phone and you're like, mm, you know what, something's not right. Ask, why does this feel off? And then maybe you'll get a wedding ring going off the finger. Maybe you'll see this guy moving. He's got too much going on, oh, this woman. He's got too much going on. The negative is just he's not, he or she is not meant to be hired enough. So don't always take a negative. You know, just double check, call it. That's what I say too, though. Yeah. So you know, and clairvoyance too, guys. When you when you think clairvoyantly, I don't want you to imagine what you see on television. Yeah. You think that this oh, yes. We're going to go um, open up and you're going to get this. It's very, very subtle, everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's it objectively outside or subjectively in your head. And if I ask everyone who's listening right now, okay, I want you to imagine as you're looking at the screen, and call I can do this too, imagine your kitchen in your mind's eye. Can you see that, everybody? How many of you don't want to look at that right now? Okay, so um, it's, uh, it's, that's how it is too. It's very, very subtle. You may be, um, I know a, uh, a friend of mine, she was going to buy a computer that was going to be sold to her. And in her mind's eye, she got an X. And she knows this, that that's her no answer. Um, other people, when they do clairvoyantly, you have a, two choices in front of you. Okay, with this job or ju this job, this state or this state. Okay, um, you can ask, imagine a, uh, a, a traffic light color, right? Red, <laughs> yellow, and green. And right. Has, it should I is this the best way for me to travel or is this the best way is this the best decision and you're gonna say how do I know it's not me making the light go green as opposed to red because everyone you're gonna ask you might get yellow you might get the red so it's not your intuition will not lie to you our and ego and our logical mind will say well no no I, I should go there because that's where I can make the most money trust your intuition guys but even call it clairvoyantly in your mind's eye seeing that traffic signal is, is just one good technique so clairvoyance is something too that I, I'd love to talk to you about as well, because we do see a lot of false storylines um, on television as a technique to show something like that you see a person behind somebody and then you've seen that. That's people think clairvoyance is also that you see the future like in a scrying, like you're a crystal ball or whatever. And, yeah. and it is, it is, more of a subjective internal than it will be an objective external. So it's rare for people to see something specific outside of your outside of your internal world. Um, so, right. So um, clairvoyance is, for example, when you meditate and then you are given some images that you may actually not see either, but you know the images, and you're and you're you're able to project a situation because clairvoyance is always relative to predictions. I made my living doing that for years, and now I, I decided that for me it was better to do prescriptive readings, just because I think I want people to really get that they create their reality. But I was seeing how people were creating their reality and what was going to happen. So clairvoyance is something that I am very I have a very high um, keening sense of clairvoyance that is uh su that's subtle it's like watching a uh, it's like remembering something so that's why my first book was called remembering the future because clairvoyance is like memory right only you're me you're actually seeing the future but in your memory and it's always about potentials guys um it t tends to work best in very short increments short times because time is not linear so like what john was saying about going I, I should take the back roads. And then his conditioned mind, which we all have, so there that's what fights against intuition is your conditioning. So um, your subconscious or your conditioned mind is the one that wants to go with what is familiar. Intuition feels very unfamiliar to many of us because none of us are trained. I mean, we are because we've, we've been this way. We've been going to the intuition gym, John and I, for years. Like it's you go to the gym, but 
90% of the populations, um, uh, what's happening to many of you is you're mistaking your intuition for instinct. So I'd like to quickly talk about that before we go on to the next clear, since it's just sort of natural. So because we live in a stress society and media conditions us to be stressed out, afraid and anxious, um, what happens is we think we're getting more intuitive because we we're like, but we're actually, it, but it's actually the opposite. Our, our, our intuition is cut off and our instinct, because we're constantly surveying the area around us against a potential threat. So you're, you're right. So you're looking for threat as opposed to spirit. Like where's the threat, right? It is a difference, but it does do something good in that it actually helps us go to the intuition gym, even though it's instinct, because the more you seek out in your environment, like where, where's the threat, where's the threat, yeah, the other part of you starts to kind of work too and like oh and what's above the threat <laughs> right so it but we don't want that we what we want and what we really really need is a much more grounded and uh loving way for us to trust that that our intuition can be like sending a net out into the ocean and then pulling back the fish and then without any attachment to what we see like what and john actually you taught me even though i'm swapping over for a second to mediumship but that was the one thing that when i was doing my tv show my mediumship show um and i was calling you and you were like just trust it just park them because i was worried i had too many dead people right? <laughs> was, because it was the trust factor because i was then stressed out looking for a threat i was going to go wrong right so that is something we all have to to develop our intuition to expand our intuitive abilities we need to watch out for the part of us that's always looking for the perceived threat because that's not intuition, right? And that is the conditioned mind that will also shut us off like going, no, 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 this is the right way. This is the safer way. This is the way we know when we should have done yeah. the. And the reason, I mean, we, we go to the logic guys because every kid is born psychic. You see kids coloring, dancing. I think they got one foot in this world, one foot where they yeah. just came from. And then they start school. And then that's the right side of the brain, the creative, yeah. the coloring, the thing, the, the joy, the you know, and uh, we start school at about five, six years old, then the left side of the brain, the analytical side, that logic side needs to come in because we need to learn maps, uh, languages, listening to the teacher. So life call it, I think, really pushes our intuition away. Mm -hmm. We have to remember, and it's like call it, so we were talking about clairvoyance, guys. You, I'm, try to figure out, you might have all of them, right? You go into a room. And notice if the, notice the words. I don't like the look of that furniture there. I don't like the look of that picture there. Clear sentient feel. I don't like the feel of this room. I don't yeah. like the feel of the picture there. You, you don't even know why you're saying it. You're not a designer. You like the feel. Um, or uh, clear audience really quickly. How many times you hear your name being called? Nobody is there. I have a funny story. Oh, I have a really funny story about clear audience because I clear audience for me it's not like John like John is very clear audience and I'm only kind of clear audience once in a while but boy oh boy when I get clear audience it's so huge so my very first husband there was my the date the first date that we were on we held hands and I was having as I always did my fantasy of a wedding dress <laughs> I was a lot younger and I heard yeah. loud as can be this is not your husband. Like I swear to God, I don't know what voice that was. I married him anyway, but it was what was good about that is that intuitive hit, Claire audience hit, stayed in my memory banks because when we divorced quickly thereafter, um, I knew that wasn't the husband that I was looking for and the one that I have now is over there running the show here um, is the perfect man for me. But it's interesting because that intuition because I didn't, I probably wouldn't have trusted it had it not been so unique. And I think many of you on this webinar have had some kind of weird experience that you just can't explain intellectually. Go ahead, John. Well, absolutely, and clear audience. This happens to people. It happens to partners, husband and wives, people that love each other, or if there's a connection. Um, say Colette and Mark are, are at home. Mark will yell out to Colette, what do you want? And she's saying, I'm not calling you there okay i'm not calling you so what happened was she could have been thinking of mark at that exact mark. moment that is clear. telepathy goes to mark and he hears it you know using the uh, energy center of the throat it sparks a clear audience and he actually hears her voice 
husband and wife do this all the time. They yell up the stairs, what do you want? And it's, um, they're not, they didn't say anything, but they thought of them. So they'll get your psychic ability, your intuition. They, you know, Mark, Mark might have clear audience. And it's not always going to be loud. Like with me, Colette heard, this is not your husband. Uh, and I <laughs> crazy. I take the side road. And many of you have gotten clear audience uh, happening to you. How many times have you been driving and you hear in your head, slow down? You're not looking at the speedometer. You don't know, is it your guide? Is it your intuition? I don't know, but when I hear slow down when I'm driving, even though I'm going in the normal speed, yeah. uh, I trust it. And I live in New Hampshire, call it, like you did. And once I heard it going up my road, and I live because I live in the woods, there was a deer right right ahead of me. So if I didn't slow down, that's the big guys. Okay, so clear audience, clear buoyance, clear sentience. They are the cycle portals of your information to get this, guys. It's amazing. I love teaching this with Colette. I love this. You know, there's some really great exercises. Um, one of the reasons why John and I, uh, we I want to go back to something you said earlier about us being water. Because water is memory. It holds memory, and it's a conducer. So a transducer. So right. so consciousness, which is something that post-materialist science has now agreed is fundamental to the world. Like the universe is consciousness first, matter second, like wave before particle. Um, and that's kind of hard to wrap our heads around because I see me, I have a dog, I see my husband, I see the house I'm in. I actually, my five senses tell me that I'm in time and space and that I touch a table and see John, you know what I'm saying? So, so we have to kind of skip over that and just go blindly with faith that the consciousness, which is actually comprises 96% of the universe, 4% is material, 96 is invisible. So that translates through us. So that's why you can be standing in a room and, and looking at the best looking guy you've ever seen in your life, or girl, whatever, you know, and and they're smart and genius and whatever, and you feel, eh, you know, like they're that you don't feel like you vibe with them. And that's that whole vibratory pattern that does is not a match to you. And so you so it's that the idea is that we don't trust it enough because it is fleeting. When we look for things to be very concrete and kind of heavy. So we want why we look for evidence we want evidence that is a, you know beginning middle and an end it's in a box and there it is but our evidence through us intuitively comes to us fleetingly and we need to be able to be neutral enough to accept the information and that's the biggest thing that you guys need to hear today is you just have to be playful with this um, it's like um, a muscle you, they got to keep using it to, to see okay how am i feeling right yeah, and you and play with it every day. Like I keep a journal, and and like again, John and I do this for a living. Um, we didn't have a choice. This is the other thing. Like people who end up in our professions don't wake up one day and say, "I think I'm going to talk to dead people for a living." And you can ask John or anybody that knows me. I've been doing intuitive work for 31 years full time, but it was only about eight years ago that I was willing to say that I was a medium, even though I was talking to dead people. I was like, not talking to dead people. Nope, I can't prove it. I don't really know 100%. I'm just really intuitive. I just know these storylines. Like, I'm a very skeptical person. Um, John is too. Like, we don't just accept anything. We we have to have consistent feedback. And that's why, that's why we have learned that also because now, the other thing is, is for him and I, we started like years ago. But now the whole, our whole species is on patrol, right? And we're on patrol. So, Everybody is starting to have more and more intuitive experiences that they cannot logically understand. And so it doesn't, you can't understand it logically. You have to understand it through, not through the head, but through the heart. And you have to learn to discern between the, ch the chaff and the wheat, right? The wheat and chaff. Like you have to know what's valuable and what's not valuable. Because just as we're being bombarded by information on social media, et cetera, and there's too much, way too much, same is happening to us intuitively. It's like we're getting smorgasbordered, right? <laughs> Not waterboarded, smorgasbordered. <laughs> right. I think the consciousness of man has changed, and I think the uh, outside world is making us more sensitive. And you're hearing a lot, guys, about these are two words that I'm hearing lately: soul and yeah. empath or empathy. Everyone is feeling what's going on, and they're like, "Why am I feeling this?" Some people are touching uh, to, in this to uh, 
they're touching on mediumship. Um, so uh, they're asking me, John, um, is the spirit world getting closer? Or are we getting higher? Or, you know, with our, you know, I, I think it's both actually, Colette. I, I really do. And I think that we're, we are. I never looked at it that way, though, Colette. We are on alert all the time. Can I ask you a question, John? When you, when you, well, okay, because I'd love to slide into mediumship now because I think it's important because people, you know, we want to give you guys some information today. So when you just said that somebody asked you whether it's higher or lower, um, right. that, that is a, a languaging. So, so that's different. That, that is not everybody sees it like that because I see it as sideways. So I look right. at parallels as opposed to hierarchies, hierarchies right. because parallels enable us to recognize that there are veils that are getting thinner for everyone. That's why there's so many more mediums. You know how we were talking about that? Like, what the heck? There's so many people. Are, everybody's talking to dead people now <laughs> because it's the veils are thinner. You just froze yeah. for me. Am I moving? <laughs> no, you just froze on my end, but that's okay. It could be my internet. Um, so why don't we, let's talk a little bit more about mediumship. So, so before we do, I just want to ground everybody in. The way to enhance your intuition is to initially we is is to meditate. I meditated 90 minutes a day when I first started this work and I still meditate. I don't meditate 90 minutes a day anymore. I had to in the beginning because I was so cuckoo. I needed to I needed something to calm me down. Yeah. But meditation is your number one priority because it enables the mind to quiet. It enables right. us to get grounded and to not be self-centered because intuition isn't self-centered. It's go, it moves through us. It's like, like the water, right? It moves through us from consciousness, yours and mine. That's how we read. Um, so for mediumship, how does it feel to you, John, when you do mediumship? Well, it's different too. Um, I think uh, just really quickly, guys, but just I'd like to say, use your intuition every day, play with it. Ask yourself, yeah. I wonder how many emails am I going to get? If you get bills that are still mailed to your house, I wonder what this bill is going to be. I wonder what my boss is going to wear. I wonder what uh, piece of the headline is tomorrow. Keep using it. If you're in an office building that got three elevators and three elevators on each side of an office building, ask yourself, what elevator door is going to open first? Just try it, guys. Just keep building that muscle. But when it comes to mediumship, call it, I had to know. Uh, it happened with me uh, unexpectedly. I never set out to be a medium, I was, I was working quickly. A woman showed up, uh, she was coming to see me, and this is in Born Knowing, she was coming to see me about her artwork. Uh, she was a, uh, a designer, we were talking about her work and colors. Future, believe it or not guys, people do come to us, not just for the future, it's about what's wow. going on, how they can you know, make something better. And as we're talking to her, in my mind's eye, like I said, look at your kitchen, I looked at her and there was a woman right beside her. She was an elderly woman and I just, I just knew her clothes didn't match and she was showing me her diamond ring like this. And I'm looking at the woman, I'm looking at my client, I'm looking at the old woman, I'm looking at the client. And I said, Mari, there's an elderly woman right beside you. Her clothes don't match and she's holding and she's showing me a diamond ring. Well, she got up and screamed. I got up and screamed. She <laughs> we were both saying, what was that? Because it was a different kind of feeling, guys. Okay, it, it really was different. She said that her great aunt Ada, who helped raise her, was colorblind, hence the different clothes. And the ring that she was wearing right now, while she was uh, in my office, was the ring she inherited from this woman. So obviously, what I think happened was after doing readings for two years, I didn't just, it just, it just, I believe, call it that maybe you said sideways. I think that maybe my consciousness expanded where yeah. those on the other side were actually close enough. They could merge with me, not possess, just blend with me to get the information. Ever since that day, it's never stopped. And so I will feel here and see. Now, Colette and I just did Arizona together. She mm -hmm. started off first. She came up with some stuff on the, with the name Ethel and then the name, <laughs> different names. I mean, who says Ethel? You know, and uh, hearing it, and it, it was a pleasure to watch her and Lisa Williams. But um, just quickly, guys, what I got before I went on, sometimes I'll get information when I'm on stage. Sometimes I'll get it in the uh, before I go on, which I love getting. but. I have to trust now. Sometimes I get nothing, so my foot touches the floor. And I knew immediately, I, in my mind, I'm watching Colette, and I wasn't even like, you know, is anybody there? I was just enjoying the woman doing her thing. And uh, she sat down and did it, and in my mind's eye, I saw a casino chip. And I knew from that one picture, Colette, there was a whole story. I knew that uh, 
someone was either a, a not just that they just didn't like slot machines they worked on the casinos they did the 21 uh table the crap gambling was big with them and i knew that some that chip was buried somehow uh used in the burial of the person that i was making with i just what you know the picture one picture says a thousand words this was true everyone and I was failing and then I went to the certain section of the room. There was about 1,100 people there. Celebrate your life. And as I'm coming on this side of the room, I feel like I have a father figure or a grandfather figure who's coming through. I know he was big into gambling. Either he worked the casinos. Um, and I know there's a chip that was either buried in the casket or it had to do with the burial. Sure enough, a hand raises. I said, okay, let me get, I don't just take, take what people like, yes, yes. Uh, people might say, one woman did say, well, my father liked to go to Vegas. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. So just really quickly, I just said, do you understand this passing? Do you understand this? And I kept saying, oh, how is the chip attached to the burial? I said, did you bury it? Did you put a, a poke chip in there? She says, he either, he worked at the, he worked there. Um, he, t t he, was, he was all about gambling, Vegas. I think he worked in Vegas because uh, we did a lot of messages. And I said, okay, but what about the chip? Did you put in the ca in the casket? She said, no, he was cremated. She said, but when we scattered his ashes, we threw the chips right behind them. I said, okay, wait a minute. Let me get this. You have the ashes, you scatter the ashes, and then you took casino chips and then threw them after the ashes? And she said, absolutely. I said, that was it. You see, so I felt it. I felt this love for his daughter. Um, I saw the casino, the casino chip, clear audience, and um, I just felt it and heard it that time, Paula. So that's how mediumship happens to me. But this is years of training myself, saying, okay, is this me? Is this them? And there's a different vibe, Colette. Now, Colette, you've been doing psychic work for many, many years. Mediumship is fairly not so new to you, but new. How did you know, Colette? Like, okay, well, wait a minute. Mediumship only, okay, so here's that's interesting because I've done mediumship since the first reading 30 years ago. I just refused to call it that. So I was just like, oh, I never, because I thought I was just getting information about a story because I right. wasn't, right? So, um, and I had resistance to mediumship, but once I gave up the resistance, it was like the little Dutch boy with my finger in the, in the dam. And I took the, you know, I took my finger out of the dam and all of a sudden, and, uh, and now, and then that was very interesting too, because I literally, I read the books you gave me because I've, I've always been very, very good as an intuitive. I can't make bacon, eggs, and toast at the same time. So if you're wondering, like, I'm not, I'm not egotistical about this. I just can't do a lot of normal things normal people do. But I could talk to dead people. Um, so for me, well, the first time it happened was the same screaming thing. Was when I touched. I was I was an aromatherapist, and this was 31 years ago. This happened. I put my hands on one of my first clients' backs, and uh, I was also doing tarot readings at the time. Um, not, but not professionally. Like I'd been doing it since I was 17. I wasn't adding it in the, in the thing. Um, anyway, so I put my hand on her back and I immediately heard the name because you know I hear names, Frank, and that he had molested her when she was eight, that she had all these issues at the bottom of her back. And I and I just blurted it out like, oh my gosh, did he, was your stepfather named Frank and did he molest you when you were eight, blah, blah, blah. So she screamed and I screamed. And then I was like, oh, that's probably her boundary issues. Please don't do that at home. But so it was just like this, oh my God. But then I, what I did now here's because some people may do this. They may be a natural medium, but they refuse it. So they say, oh, I'm just picking this up about you. So you may then translate it down it, it being psychic. Now I'm a kind of an unusual kind of hybrid version of this, but eventually when I just completely accepted I was a medium, then it was very, very clear. And for me, it's identical every time that I, I get it. I get this cool story. I can say, stop, move over. John taught me that, like park it, because they start talking to me at once or maybe more than one there, especially when we're in a big audience, because John and I are usually in front of a thousand, two thousand people. And then we get, then I get the story like Ethel. That was really, that was crazy. Because normally I get something before I go on, but I had vertigo that night. So I had to actually sit down on stage and I was really not sure I was going to get anything. And immediately I got the this boy yeah. that suicide. Yeah. And I got the name of his fa his father, her father, the mother's father, the whole story. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, there was Ethel. And it was like, 
I, it was like she came barreling in, like pressing through the membrane and going, look, wow. Like, and she was like bug eyed. I felt like she was so shocked because she could see the audience through me. That was the other thing. I could feel it. And like she wouldn't leave. Remember, I was like, Ethel, we're done. Like, it was just really funny because she was the grandmother who just wanted to tell the story, the psychology of the family, so no one in the audience would look at them and think they were so screwed up. And then the other woman that I had done a reading for where the mother came through and said, never speak about the family. You're not allowed to talk to Colette. And she said, that's exactly what my mother would say. Yeah, yeah, right? it was beautiful. Guys, when you, when you, we love doing this work and we can, you know, we can have fun with you and we'll talk about that and where we're gonna have fun and everything, but it's like, when you see somebody's heart being healed, um, this the you know the Jamie girl who you know her, with her son who passed yeah. away. I, I'm looking. She's right behind me uh, at the at the venue, and I'm looking oh, at her. I'm looking at her, I'm looking at Colette, and and you could see she started to weep, but she was she was going through a, a some maybe uh, possible healing when Colette brought this person through. And I shouldn't say Colette brought them through. They come when they want, and this yeah, they go. Yeah. I don't bring anybody through. They show right, up. Right. Right. We don't have that. We don't call the dead. One eight hundred dial your dad. Okay, your mom. One eight hundred dial your dad. Is that what you just said? That's hilarious. What happened was is uh, the you know, but the whole audience can feel it too, though. And we have to trust, guys. Um, you know, eleven hundred people in the room, two thousand. We have to trust. And sometimes we all we can say is you know, let's uh, we'll do the best that we can. But to to see it, to witness it, and uh, I've taught many people look to to get a link. So, uh, you know, that you can, uh, if you have the potential for mediumship, some of us are born this way, other people will all have the potential, you just have to work harder at it. So that's why, that's why I love this. And when I, and with Colette, hold on, let me give you this compliment. Colette, I love working with her. She is one of the, um, she's, she has to be one of the most read people on esoteric subjects, not just that, consciousness, the quantum field. She's gone beyond since I've known her, her subject. So to sit and listen to this, I could listen to her all day, not just watch her psychic and mediumship work, but her knowledge. I'm sorry, call it. I had to say it. One of the <laughs> most I just read books. a lot of books. It I'm a nerd. Book. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. <laughs> so you know what I'd love to do now is take some questions, maybe do a reading and then, and, and actually, you know, one of the things that we love to do together and we haven't done this in a while but john and i met at hay house uh, and i gotta tell you guys this because i was with hay house since 2005 and i met john on a cruise and so uh it was the first time actually my husband had seen me do mediumship remember i because i came on stage after john and i was right. only calling myself an intuitive at that time and i even told hay house i don't talk to dead people but john left a lot of them on the stage and they just took me over and i mean i smelled them i talked to them it was like the craziest thing and i remember jumping off stage saying to my husband you're not gonna leave me are you <laughs> he goes that was weird just don't bring them in the room <laughs> So it was like, but but John and I know that on water, one of the things that why we're doing this cruise coming up to in April and that we're gonna talk about at the end, but because we know that psychic phenomena and mediumship is exponentially like over the top when we're on water. What do you mean by press the link? I don't yeah, know how press, to press the link. Hang on one sec, my husband wants to show it to you. So yeah, so while we, we're going to um, also, uh, what's, the one that says which the speaker speaker one yes okay we're going to show you this just in case you guys are interested you can click below the cruise information um do i have to publish it no it's not there okay i have to yeah. publish this and then we'll do it again later but you can just click on that if this interests you at all but let's talk a little bit more about water so and another reason why uh, working with water um i was taught by i'm a reiki master also and uh, originally my Reiki master who taught me, taught me about putting water, salt water underneath a table when I was doing readings. And it did two things. One, it would take on that extra energy that empaths would take on. Like some of you who are empathic know that you could blow up in crowds and you just feel everything and you just feel overwhelmed all the time, whatever, and that's me. I'm, an, I'm, I'm a total empath. You'll see me grow five pounds in and out, like in a day, just because I, I take on the energy. So water is a conducer for intuition and mediumship. So if you wanna play around with your intuition, get a deck of Oracle cards. I don't care if they're mine or John's, like the bottom line is find one you like. At this moment, we're not, we're, we just get one. Cause they're like, also they'll help you with your intuition too. Right, John? Right, no, because you look, and 
you, you think you okay you read the guidebook guys too i understand that get to know the meaning of the card but your intuition is going to just talk yeah. to you you're going to symbols i mean uh call it's got beautiful artwork on mine i have on my it's that's what, how i started reading the card the colors the numbers the little symbols within the symbols guys too it's not just what the book says also and water is a conducive many of you um who take baths or take showers you get a lot of information in the pool. i get all you my know, information in the shower you what all my good ideas in the shower <laughs> or driving my car movement moving Absolutely. Right. Well, it does. And when I was with Colette, uh, you know, I said we were on this cruise. And so it's been a while. And I know uh, with me, if I don't book something ahead of time and we're going to have one of our winters, well, no, I don't know. I don't want to put that out there here in New England or in Canada. I said, what can we do? It? So I said, Colette, should we do a cruise? Absolutely. And that's why we decided to go to, uh, you know, um, it's going to be great, too. So I'll call it that turquoise water. We, I always like to go to the Caribbean. That's me. I like going to the Caribbean. Same thing with you, yeah. Let's get back to the cruise in a second. I just want, I want to answer some questions, right? So we'll, we'll talk about the cruise again at the end because I know a few people want to ask about it, but let's do some questions and maybe we can get a reading in. I'd, I'd love to do that if we could get a mediumship intuitive reading, if we can. It's too weird. It's kind of weird on these things, but Mark, do you have the questions um, or should I open the chat? Uh, yeah, if you want to open your I'm, chat. We're gonna, I'm going to open my chat. I don't know how to do it, but here we go. Yes, nope, I don't. I'm going to take off the cruise. No, no, there they are. Wait, no, nope. here they are. Here we go. Maine. I channel when I'm meditating. Yes, here we go. Medit here we go. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna go all the way down. Uh, that's my husband's <laughs> hand. Wanna see him? I found him on the internet. I fished him out of the sea. <laughs> Just do a reading. <laughs> okay, let's pick somebody to do a reading and bring them up on camera. Oh, you know how to do this. Can't yeah, we? Okay. No. Yes, they can ask. No, they can oh poop. Oh my gosh, it, Shanice, your aunt's name is Aunt Ethel. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's too crazy. Okay, so you know what, Shanice, we already have a natural connection to you. So um, let's, uh, can we Can we grab a reading? Do you think we can pull this off here? I don't know, but you can't bring her on camera. We can't? No. Oh, all right, we can't get you on camera. All right, so Shanice, let me uh, run something by you. So just the name Shanice. Um, I'm going to ask, do you have any connection to the Southern United States? Um, if we can see her, uh, oh, how can we see you? Southern, we're gonna use Shanice right now. Wanna, <laughs> can we even see her here? Are we, can we do this? I don't know if no, we can do this. Can't. We can't do this, that's a drag. No, this is too, too, too hard. weird. Yeah, no, we're looking too at that. We're trying guys, but you know, not bad, Colette. Yeah. Hang on one sec. I know. Oh, you can't no, it. I know we can. Wait a sec. Let me get her up here. I know we can because I read it. So let me just try one thing, you guys. And if not, we didn't plan on this, but okay, we're wasting time apparently. Okay. So you know what? Let's let's talk about, let's go back to what we were training. We can't do that. So I'm just going to say one thing that I'm going to, because I started with Shanice, I'm picking up also a memory from either Georgia, uh, Carolinas, the Southern United States, and I'm getting a hug. A hug from there. So apparently, it's this is difficult for us to do a reading on this because it's going by too fast. So let's just keep teaching you guys, um, and uh, we're going to be able to do well, that. You could, you could go uh, walk people through cruise. It's probably. Oh yeah. Okay. Day. So what? Because you so, know what? It's at the cruise. I think I know this. Shin I think this is the Shanice who I know. She lives in Virginia Beach, down in oh, Virginia. So. Um, she's, um, she's been, a, uh, she's been a fan of mine for a long time. I love this woman. She's on Hey House Radio. She knows all of us and she's no. saying, I want to go through school and, uh, she loves this subject and I would need her. And yeah, she's talking right now. I got her. Oh my God. You know her. That's too crazy. <laughs> well, you, you choose her. Yeah, isn't that funny? Because I definitely got the southern states. That makes sense. Virginia, the southern states. I'm seeing that there's a plantation nearby, and she's got even greater background, like grandparents or whatever that uh, that lived on a plantation. I think so. I don't know if that's that. I'd love to hear from you um, if that makes sense to you. But I'm getting a hug from great grandmother. So I don't know what your um, ethnic background is, but I feel that is, if that should make sense to you, I'd love to hear about that in the chat. Um, but that's what we're getting. So, um, let's talk about 
to help you guys tune in uh, to mediumship and for yourselves, right? So uh, a great way to do that is to doodle, um, do, right? Doodling. Doodling is a really, really good way to do it. And when we doodle, we can doodle information about about like we see things. It's like, what does my dad have to say to me? My husband's going to send something to me um, and do that. And we're going to actually do that kind of stuff on our cruise. Right, John? I mean, we're going to be taking people through a whole week where we're teaching you about mediumship. We're also going to do mediumship for you. And we're going to teach you about oracles and how to tune into the mystical aspect of life on this cruise. I know, I can't believe we've got, we're running out of time here. I can't believe this. Okay, so uh, Mark, are you sending me something here? Just give it to me now. So just give it to me half baked. John, do you wanna say anything to anybody? Is that correct? Is that the right person? Um, yep. Uh, you? yep. Uh, which, which should you do? Now I do know her, Colette. You said you talked about plantation, but you don't know this woman at all. Um, no. She is an African. She's an African American, okay. right? So I don't, you know, uh, but she she's lovely and she will she will get a hold of us and I will confirm with you. Yeah, yeah, I confirm. yeah absolutely. Right. So let's um, move into here. So um, let's go back into the cruise thing and just show you guys some of this because I know quite a few of you are writing into the website now and on the chat about other things. But we're going to be doing a lot of teaching on the cruise. So whoops. Um, Mark, I just did something wrong. Um, did you open up? Yep, page? I opened up the page, oh, but I don't know where to open our jam. Just to press on the cruise information. Yeah, button. press on the cruise information. John and I are going to go through it with you. So um, um, tell your fantastic. Okay, stories. wait, wait, wait. Okay, so okay. Well, there was a there was a ghost on one of the cruises that everybody saw. That was pretty cool. Um, and because it's water, they can. Uh, but we're going to be doing. John and I have done this cruise before, and it's but the it's the cruise ship that we love the most it's the nicest one it's brand new and it's really affordable so uh it's holland america and we've done them all we've done chicken of the sea we've done <laughs> like we've done them where they're super uncomfortable and we've done them on this kind of boat and for some reason this kind of boat is the best boat ever so we're going to start in La fort lauderdale in miami and we usually on our first night we do a meditation we get super we get grounded as much as we can and we teach you um some strategies so that you can manage your empathy and your psychic abilities on the ship because everybody gets them like you can't not have them so we make sure that you have a lot of stuff to do because um, we're lecturing the whole time and you can go to the spa too but just to get a really really as much info as you can and we then we help you sort it out and you can ask us questions because quite a few people come on and that want to be mediums that don't know how to have their business etc I can't read that tell stories my husband is telling me what to do no John. have John tell some stories John yes no, um <laughs> What I love about the cruise too, call it, is because they're getting like 14, 16 hours with us. And um, the way that the cruise event organizer does this, it's intimate too, though, which I love, guys. And it's, uh, you know, we, they, we get this great theater. And, uh, but to go to Fort Lauderdale, Key West, Grand Turks, Caicos, I've never mm -hmm. been to the Dominican Republic. Um, Half Moon Key, you will see call that swimming like a fish there. Okay. <laughs> and, but, um, you know, to teach on the water is fantastic. You know, the, the yeah. whole thing. And it's not just work, guys. This is, it's for the mind, it's for the body, and it's for the soul, guys, because all of us need to get away, have a little fun, learn a little, and then bask in that turquoise water in the sun. And you know what I love to call that? A lot of people make me nervous and say, um, I've never traveled by myself. I don't know if, will I like these people? It's a lot of people. I'm telling you. It's with like-minded soul guys, where it's okay to talk about this because this part is normal to us. And, uh, you know, because you're, you're quite aware, but to be on that water and to be with you and then the reception and then the meals, I don't know. I don't know who's more excited, call it the people who are coming, me, you, what? But I, you know, it's the perfect thing that I need for me after one of our winters. So hey, I know I'm ready. My hey, husband wants hey, John, to talk. John. <laughs> What was one of the most fascinating things that happened to you with it in like being on the water? How did it amplify stuff and you know from one of the prior cruises? Um, well, like Colette said, we always the organizers choose Hall in America the way they take the way they uh uh take care of you, but it's um, I think it's uh, um, 
our work, call it nice work, and you will too. It's, it seems to be more enhanced, more enhanced because I think people are they get used to us, Mark, and call it too. You know, after like a you know a few days, or whatever. but um, uh, spirit or the, my intuition uses everything that's around me. Um, you know, it's uh, you know the, the water, and I remember saying one thing to one guy, and um, I, I because I saw some uh, sea turtles. The sea turtles were important during a person's reading. So we'll teach you that too. Everything around you, every side. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and as Colette said too, though, you know, we do things together here too. And you go out snorkeling, don't mm -hmm. be surprised if they're with you too, Colette. But don't. Okay. All right. We're right there. I've got a really funny story. So when you, and you'll really get this. So one of the cruises that I've done, I got on stage. And this man came to me, he stunk like pickles and he had the worst BO, like, like I'm talking smelling pickles, garlic pickles and body odor. And he named himself and it was the craziest thing. And we had like 600 people in the audience at that, that, that particular cruise. And this woman put up her hand. She goes, Oh my God, that was my dad. And he would always have to put his arm out the window. I kept saying, I see him with his arm out the window because she goes, because it stunk up the car. So it was like the most fun thing. Like, and you, you really have a visceral experience when mediumship happens. And guess what else too? Everybody in the audience. Now this is a small cruise this time too, which is even better for John and I. There's only 150 people there, which is a tiny group. So, and, and everybody gets something, right, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions you want to ask us, Mark? Um, no, this, <laughs> I like the stories where but things, odd things that happen. First of all, you'll always see John and Colette in the casino. So. Well, the casino. I love the casino, <laughs> but I never, I never take more than twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm a twenty dollars slot machine girl. That's what I like. What I love about <laughs> Mark, um, I just go there, and it doesn't necessarily because I'm intuitive doesn't mean or a medium that I'm going to win. You know what I mean? Because I'll sit at the same one. You know, just I just go to have fun. But a lot of people, what I find, Mark asked for a funny story. I find it funny that when I'm in the casino, I look behind me, there's a line of people, um, physical people, actually. And they're like, I wonder what machine he's going to go to. Guys, have a good time. Don't follow me in the casino because I am just saying, is this the machine that's going to pay off? Is this the machine that's going to pay off? The whole cruise for me is a, is a payoff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. Absolutely. I remember Sonia Brown when she, because I was touring with her, she would go with, and she was really good at it. She would bring her big things. She would win all this money. And then all these people would be around her to see if they would get, get it. I don't know. I mean, don't follow me in because I'm not good at it. So I just like it. But you know what? Here's the thing. Um, we're really excited to be able to you know, and teach on the water. And for us, it's like, because you walk off the boat, also realizing that, wow, this is real. If anybody brings their skeptical uh, husbands with them or wives, holy moly. Oh, and by the way, I love this. And Tamara says, I know I channel when I write my novels. I do too. I'm in the middle of writing a novel right now. And the characters speak to me just like I feel when I'm a medium. Exactly. Right? It's like exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, this has been great. Mark, did you only book an hour with Webinar Jam? Is that right? Or can I just, yeah. I want to pull three cards for everybody. Yeah. So okay. I'd like to kind of give you guys um, a, a reading. But just before you go, just let them know. What? That, um, like like this, this cruise. Yeah. The, the crew is going to be phenomenal. And I tell you, yeah. I am her Colette's husband, and it's the most amazing thing to see these two work live and the experience for an entire week of like-minded people, the community, and everything that happens while you're on the boat and the connections is phenomenal. So that's why, that's the only reason that we do these cruises is because of the extra fun that comes along with it. Yeah, totally. Okay, so here's, the, here's something for the week. Okay, here's something for the week. Um, and uh, thank you, Shanice. I'm just noticing here that you've, uh, you actually wrote back that it made sense to you. So that's really cool. And yes, I can feel as far as South Africa, but right now we're going to go like this. So we're going to take three cards for everybody. And we just had the uh, new moon in Scorpio. And so it's asking all of us this week and this weekend to go over our unfinished business. So unfinished symphony is the card that represents all of us today about what we need to kind of clean up. So it's kind of like a special house cleaning, if you will. 
What, it, what haven't you dealt with? Next thing is a leg up, knowing that spirit is your partner. So whenever you're connecting to spirit through your intuition, through mediumship, um, a leg up means you don't do it by yourself, right? You do it because you're in tandem with the invisible. And the last card is new life, right? Remember that you learn new things all the time. Don't expect yourself to know everything um, before you actually experience it. Just let yourself be open to a new experience. Um, yeah, uh, John, anything to say at the end? Yes, yes just really quickly. If people uh, call it, you can do this to a mock, it takes 60 seconds, okay? All right, everyone, I want you to think of a time uh, when you had so much joy in your life, okay, or an accomplishment. Think of a time of you had so much joy in your life or an accomplishment, all right, or a feel-good memory, all right? You got something, okay, all right? Now, everyone, just close your eyes for a second. Let me just do this for you. Close your eyes. See mm -hmm. that stuff. See that scene, see yourself in that scene, feeling that joy and ask yourself, what do I need to do to bring in these feelings into my life again? And go with the first answer that you hear. What do I need to do to bring in these feelings into my life again? See the scene and then ask, take the very first thing that comes into you, uh, into your mind. It could be do this, do this, take this class, do this, do the cruise, I don't know. All right, go with it. So uh, that is my little tip here too, though. But I got to thank Mark for doing this and setting this all up, guys. I feel like with Colette, I mean, guys, you know this. You can raise your hand or say it. I could sit here and talk for another two hours with you. I Me really, too. really could. I got, I'm, I got you on the boat for a week. And remember, guys, yes. I, go to I don't just go for myself. Just to, I go to learn because, like I said, she's one of the most brilliant teachers that I've ever worked with. And she's a really, really good friend. And her husband, Mark, isn't so bad either. Yeah, he's pretty <laughs> cute. Um, we're going to really enjoy ourselves. Thank you all for joining us today. I know it was a short one, but we really wanted to um, make a connection to you. And we will do more of these. Um, I hope you can come on with us. And uh, we'll do another webinar, I guess. If, if you can't make the boat, we'll do another one after. Bless you all. Mwah. Karen Reed or johnholland.com. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great uh, rest of the uh, weekend. Anything else, Mark? Uh, no, you're all good. Come on, say I just hi to them. Come on, you're the one. This is my husband. Hey, hey sorry. He's super cute. Didn't, didn't shave. Didn't I found him on anything. the internet. <laughs> hey, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Paula. Hey, guys. Take care. Thank you so much.